Hello, I'm Joe Morrow, one of the associate pastors here at Fourth Church, and this is Rhythm and Word. Over the past three weeks, we have been learning about the power of friendship on the road of life by tracing the journey of the gospel in the book of Acts. We've been lifting up insights that can help us build more resilient and faithful friendships in our own lives and times through understanding the encounters in the book of Acts. This week, the journey of the gospel in Acts concludes as the Apostle Paul finally arrives in Rome to give us a picture of what life was like for him when he arrived, let's turn to a reading from the closing chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. Listen now for God's spirit in these words from scripture. Three months later, we set sail on a ship that had wintered at the island, an Alexandrian ship with the twin brothers as its figurehead. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there for three days. Then we weighed anchor and came to Regium. After one day there, a south wind sprang up, and on the second day, we came to Puteoli. There we found believers and were invited to stay with them for seven days. And so we came to Rome. The believers from there, when they heard of us, came as far as the Forum of Appius and three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. When we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. And then the chapter and the book concludes with these words about Paul. He lived there for two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. So Paul and the good news that began in Galilee and reached its climax in Jerusalem has finally come to Rome, the heart of the great military, economic, and political power of the day. It is here where all Paul's encounters and friendships have led him. But Paul doesn't come this way alone. He comes in chains as a prisoner with an armed guard watching over him. Paul is under what we might call today house arrest. He is not a tourist free to leisure around. He's not uncritically welcomed by the local Jewish community either. After spending all that time and expense, it might be some cause for bitterness on his part, or it could have felt like a letdown. Paul could have turned inward prayerfully, locking himself away inside that house until a word from God helped him to determine how his own story might end here in Rome. But scripture tells us Paul lived on boldly sharing and teaching. And this encouraged the believers in and throughout Rome. He welcomed all who came to him, welcoming all who came to him. On my own pilgrimage along the Camino de Santiago with four church members and friends, I was particularly impressed and inspired by the individuals who along the road offered hospitality by playing music or offering free homemade stamps for pilgrim's passports, which are used to mark the journey and the mileage each day. I recall one such day on our pilgrimage when we entered a heavily forested landscape with the smell of eucalyptus fragrance heavy in the air. As we paused for a moment of rest after an arduous uphill climb, we heard the sound of bagpipes in the air and came to find that in the middle of this forest, a bagpiper was belting out tunes to encourage pilgrims as they walked by. It was a kind and unexpected gesture to have musical accompaniment with us on our way. And it got me thinking about 
how many people this wizened bagpiper with long white beard had seen walking by him that day? How many people blurry-eyed as they stumbled out of bed that morning and put their feet on the trail? How many people aching because of sore limbs or even heavy hearts? How many impatient or rude people might he have observed, angry at their own selves or perhaps at others for some unknown reason? And yet, no matter who came along, this bagpiper welcomed everyone, all people, with his upbeat tunes. Like Paul, he did not let his circumstances or the heat of the day or the reactions of the pilgrims stop him from sharing his music, his message of encouragement and hope. True friends open themselves up sharing and receiving with all whom they encounter. Not to be berated or to have their kindness misused, but to embody the grace of a God who also listens to and encourages them as well, no matter what they're feeling or holding at any moment, in their sadness or in their gladness. I began this series with poetry from Dr. Maya Angelou that reminded us of the importance of friendship and guarding against isolation. She says that nobody but nobody can make it out here alone, neither us or Paul or the gospel itself. And I want to conclude this series with poetry that speaks to the power of our openness in friendship to all the guests, the wonders, the conditions, and surprises that God puts on our path. Hear these words from the poet Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still, treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. May God bless and keep you as you ponder this good news. Oh, say.
Shalom, 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 shalom